Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a talk about home automation with Amazon Echo uh, and Ruby. Uh, I hope it works well. I've never tried this thing out in a room with 300 people, so you know, I guess we'll see. <laughs> But basically, I wanted to create a kind of an API where there wasn't one to ameliorate all of my first world problems. I don't want to get up off the couch. Why would you? Uh, so who am I? At Zach Feldman on GitHub and Twitter and all those things. I'm the co-founder and chief academic officer of the New York Code and Design Academy. We're one of those newfangled coding boot camps that you keep hearing about. Uh, one of our students is actually in the audience right there. How's it going? <laughs> um, NYCDA.com. Classes on web development from basic to advanced, iOS development, UI, UX design, uh, pretty much just awesome technology classes. So check them out. Uh, ask me any questions if you want afterwards about them. Uh, we're launching in Amsterdam in September, so I'm stoked about that. Um, so the Amazon Echo is this thing right next to me that looks kind of like a garbage can, you know, kind of like R2D2 in that way. Uh, it has seven microphones, which is amazing. Uh, you know, I can tell you almost for sure that this doesn't have seven microphones, nor do any of the Android phones. So, you know, all the kind of approaches to speech recognition that have happened so far have been on inferior hardware, if you ask me, you know? Um, I don't know a ton about actually taking a waveform and parsing it into text. That is not really my area of expertise. But I can guess, I also have a music degree, I can guess that it's probably a lot easier to parse uh, speech from something that has seven microphones versus you know, one to three microphones at max. So that's why this is so amazing. Uh, I'm sitting on my couch at home, uh, or I'm even in my bathroom at home, and my living room is like over here, and that's where my echo is, and I say, like, you know, I'm not going to say the wake word just yet, but I'll ask it to do something, and it'll hear me from 20 feet away, and it'll parse that text pretty clearly um, for you know, this generation of voice uh, recognition technology. So when I got my Echo uh, about eight or nine months ago, I don't know how I got it that quickly. Don't ask me. I don't know how to get your name up in the wait list or whatever. Beats me. Uh, it came in with some, it came with some built-in functionality. Uh, like, for instance, Alexa, set an alarm for 45 seconds from now. I'd love my beautiful assistant, Mike, <laughs> to mic the echo so you guys can all hear it. Alexa, where is the International Space Station? International Space Station is in space. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alexa, play Sober by Childish Gambino. The song Sober, right? Yes. Sober by Childish Gambino. So that's one of my favorite songs. Um, Alexa, what's the forecast for tomorrow? Tomorrow, in Brooklyn, you'll see rainy weather and can expect a Brooklyn. high of 84 and a low of 73. Uh, Alexa, do my talk for me. Hmm, I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Oh no, I don't have any other slides, so, uh, oh, that's my alarm. Alexa, St Alexa? Alexa. 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 Stop. All right, so. <laughs> I love this song. Alexa. Alexa. Stop. Um, so it comes with a bunch of amazing built-in functionality. And when I unboxed it, I was wowed and amazed by this. but. I was also thinking, why can't it do more? This is a little bit ridiculous, you know? Like, it seems like I could just parse the text and have it control other things in my life. Um, so yeah, I wanted to add some more functionality to it. Uh, and to do that, I created a, a kind of proxy, a weird kind of API, and I'll go ahead and start it up right here. Uh, and hopefully it'll work, let's see. So I'll explain a little bit more about exactly how this works later on, but I'm not touching my computer right now, putting it out there. It's kind of all happening. So I can say, once this is done booting up, let's see. Alexa, add an event, breakfast at Tiffany's at 5.30. Stop. Uh, and then hopefully, if all has gone well, I'll have an event. Oh, there it is. Breakfast at Tiffany's. It has the word stop in it. That's kind of a bit of a hack. So you know we have to kind of work around the limitations of the device. Obviously, Amazon is not condoning this. So if anyone from Amazon is in the audience, sorry. <laughs> but I also have some other functionality to show you guys uh, to begin with. So Alexa, tell the world Gotham, Alexa, tell the world Gotham Ruby Conference rocks. Stop. 
you'd like to play the program called, right? No. Um, so hopefully, so you know, it's like kind of working. It at least heard me say, uh, tell the world, which is kind of the uh, instruction to tweet, right? You guys kind of get the point of that. Um, Alexa, tell the world Jesse Chan Norris is the man. Stop. Jesse Chan Norris is one of the organizers, also one of my mentors. Let's have a hand for Jesse. <laughs> um, and hopefully he showed up in my Twitter. Well, you know, at least someone kind of like him. So, you know, the point is, <laughs> you guys are all going to favorite these, right? It's going to be great. Um, you know, the point is, like, it at least heard the instruction, tell the world. You know, the, the text after that may have been a little garbled. Works a little better when I'm at home, and like I said, not in a room with 300 people. Uh, but it works okay. So how does this work? Does anyone know the, I, I'm just kidding, I know the answer. Uh, it's the Alexa Home Project. Um, if we click on this, it's just kind of a short URL. Uh, this is a GitHub repo if you guys want to take a look at it. Uh, have any of you guys ever heard of GitHub? Yeah. So anyway, uh, there's a scraper which scrapes the commands from the Amazon Echo web app, and there's a server which receives the scraped commands uh, and then parses them. Um, so uh, basically, it's two different components here. Um, and the scraper uses Water WebDriver to log into the Amazon Echo web application, which you saw. Uh, and then when a new command is posted, it sends the command to the Alexa Home server application to be parsed further. Um, so what's in a water? A lot of you guys have used water before for uh, feature testing. And basically, it's a way to run WebDriver really easily from your tests. Uh, but I'm actually not using it for that, which is a little bit weird. Uh, why can't I just use Nokogiri like everyone else? Uh, and another question you might ask is, why, wouldn't I, why would I scrape it from the web app? Why wouldn't I just try to intercept network requests from the device itself? Uh, and I'm glad you asked. I actually did try to do that. They're obviously encrypted. Uh, so if any of you guys are kind of worried about, oh, whatever I say to this thing is going to end up in the hands of Amazon, uh, I will tell you that it only sends a request whenever you give it a command, and that the, all those requests are encrypted. I couldn't find a way to decrypt them very easily. So I went to the next available option, which is there's a web application that has a history of exactly what you've said. Check it out. Uh, so I was like, great, I'll just scrape it using Nokogiri. But then I was like, but I don't want to pull it every two minutes or every five minutes or something. I want this to be immediate. I want to say something and then immediately have a command be executed. Um, so we're not just web scraping. We're actually monitoring for Ajax complete events uh, on the document. And it's kind of like a webhook in a way. Basically, whenever the web page does something, it sends um, a command to my server. Uh, so let's see some code. This is my. Uh, water login.rb file, which is basically taking care of all the magic here. Uh, I'm creating an object called Alexa Crawler, uh, giving it some settings, so the URL of exactly where all the history is for the app, uh, for the Echo itself. Uh, the login URL, if you go to echo.amazon.com, uh, you, you usually get redirected to this page. Also, the refresh time in minutes. This is a hack, so every 32 minutes, I want to just kill the application entirely, kill Firefox, and restart it, and it's a lot more reliable that way. Um, when we start up, we're going to initialize um, a new instance of Water Browser, and that opens up Firefox for me, or whatever your default uh, browser with Water is. Uh, and then there's also this keep alive method, which is going to ensure that, like I said, every 32 minutes, uh, the process is killed and then restarted again. Uh, and as you saw before, we're basically using Water to fill out all the fields to log into the application on echo.amazon.com, clicking the Submit button, and then going to the history URL to look at the history uh, from the Echo. Once we're on that history page, how do we find out what the next command is? Good question. We're actually going to inject some JavaScript into the page uh, that's going to, first of all, you know, if we're restarting the script, it's going to recognize if there was a last command so that we don't repeat commands. I was having this weird problem where I would um, tell Alexa, stop, to do something. Uh, and then 32 minutes later, it would do that thing again. So I would be like, you know, turn on all the lights or turn off all the lights. And I would just be sitting in my apartment, like talking to my friends, and all my lights would just turn off, you know? And that wasn't very fun. And I had to find the bug. And it was just that, you know, I was just executing the same commands twice. Um, so we have to protect against that. But basically, uh, the point of this snippet is that whenever an Ajax complete event fires on the document, which is what happens whenever a new command gets pushed to the page, uh, we're going to figure out the command by just doing some parsing with jQuery of whatever the command, first command is. Uh, and then we're going to send a GET request to the server that I have running on localhost 4567. Uh, can anybody tell me 
localhost 4567 what uh, framework I'm probably using to build this. Sinatra, exactly. So our good old friend Sinatra. Um, and then I'm going to run the keep alive. It's a um, recursive function. It just calls itself over and over again and stays alive. Um, and also it has a begin rescue end, which is, you know, not super awesome. You know, I know I'm not exactly following best practices here, but, um, you know, I just wanted this thing to stay alive as long as possible without my interference. Cool. So that's how the scraper works. Uh, we're just using JavaScript injection to send a get request to a local server. Uh, so the server, it receives a scrape command from the Amazon Echo, and we're basically using regex-powered parsing to match against key phrases for different modules that we've written for the Echo for this hack. Um, and it can be used with any plain text input, not just from Echo, which is really interesting, actually. So if any of you guys, I know that there was the uh, Google Now hack for uh, for Siri, where you could say, you know, uh, or Googleplex, I'm sorry, where you could say Googleplex and then um, go through some kind of proxy and scrape whatever Siri was saying. I feel like it's been deactivated recently, but if you could find a way to take uh, the commands from Siri or the commands from Google Now or something else and pass it to this, it could also parse them and, and do the same types of actions, which is kind of interesting. So that's why I decided to break it into two parts. I wanted other people to be able to use this code for their projects, too. Uh, so the server architecture sounds like a really complicated word, right? Five lines of code. Sinatra. Um, so the first pass that I did was super simple. Require Sinatra, uh, get request to slash process with a parameter Q, uh, scanning that parameter for the words turn on, and then do hue stuff. So uh, pretty much I just had to write hashtag do hue stuff, and then all the hue stuff happened. It was very simple. Uh, joking. <laughs> um, so the first pass that I did at this was, like I said, to control the hue lights in my apartment. Uh, so I was scanning for the words turn on. When I found those words, um, I used the Hue API to you know, ping the lights in my apartment uh, and turn them on, and then eventually turn them off as well. And as you can imagine, the code base kind of grew from that into this really gnarly if, else if, you know, else kind of thing that just was looking really terrible. Uh, and things just got more complicated, and I wanted to encourage open source contributions. So uh, two things that I think really encourage open source contribution, documentation, Right? Don't we all have documentation? Really easily readable documentation. And also an easily extensible modular system. You know, so not just kind of a huge if, else if tree, but you know, something that people could actually see as a pattern and you know, replicate that pattern really easily on their own and then write code on their own to do so. Um, so the result is the current code base. And that's, like I said, at alexaho.me, Alexa Home. Uh, stop. <laughs> Um, sometimes this thing gets a little bit annoying, but you know. Uh, so my code is a little bit better formatted now, and I'll show you guys on GitHub just because it looks a little cleaner there. Um, so we've got the docs folder, which basically describes getting started, how to run the program on a Raspberry Pi, which is really nice, so I don't have to have my laptop open all the time. I just have a Raspberry Pi in a closet uh, in my apartment that runs this program for me, so that's really nice. Uh, it's basically, you know, editing the auto start file in Raspberry Pi, and then um, also how to stop Alexa Home, because not everyone knows how to search with grep through all their processes and kill a process, so I thought this was pretty important. Uh, and then there's also documentation for all the modules. So we have a Google Calendar module, a Google to phone module, Hue, a JRiver player, Nest, Uber, Evernote, um, and also uh, scheduling. So that's the docs folder, and then scraper is in a separate folder, and server is in a separate folder. Uh, and then we have all the different modules also in their own folders. So it's a very modular kind of architecture. Um, and if we take a look at the current state of things, uh, it's a lot cleaner than it was when I first started. Still not necessarily the best pattern, but uh, I think that it's easy to contribute to, which is most important. So whenever you create a new module for this, uh, for this uh, platform, basically it's a class that starts with the words, I'm not going to say them because it's going to react to me, but you know what I mean, the A word. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the two things you can wake it up with are that word and also Amazon, if you said it that way. So if you happen to have an ex-girlfriend with the name, you know, then you can just call it Amazon instead if you'd like. Um, so anyway, we're configuring the Twitter client here. Uh, every class uh, that's defined for this specific project has a wake words method, which is basically an array of all the different words that could wake up that specific module. So before I was saying tell the world, that's exactly how that works. I just define the wake words inside of that array. Uh, and then I have a process command method, which is on every single class, and that's going to take whatever command she output uh, and parse it and do something with it. So 
Uh, this is a really simple example because uh, the Twitter gem is very easy to use, right? So whenever the command comes in, uh, I'm basically removing the word stop and also removing tell the world and then returning whatever is left. Uh, and that is what gets sent to my uh, Twitter account. And at the bottom of each module, uh, I have this constant module instances, which is going to push a new instance of each module uh, into that array. And then later on, we iterate through the array to check the method each time. And that's actually done in app.rb. So here we're saying, first of all, uh, load the correct modules right here. Modules equals yaml.load file. And this is just a quick YAML configuration file. So I can decide which modules to load. And in fact, if you're going to be trying this at home when you get your Amazon Echo, I'd recommend commenting out the Hue module unless you have a Hue, because it's going to ask you to press the button on top of your Hue device, which you do not have. So you're going to need to do that. Uh, and that's actually why we built in this module, uh, this modular module selection tool. Wow, that was really meta. Um, because we wanted people to be able to use this without necessarily having all the components that are necessary for all the different packages that it uses um, and be, have some selectivity there. So, uh, so once again, we're using this to figure out which modules we're going to load. Uh, we're going to iterate over each module and then require it inside of this loop. And then whenever we get a command, we're going to use the module instances that we have um, and basically scan through the command that we get for any of the wake words here. Uh, if we find any of the wake words, then we'll process the command using that specific module. So everything's a lot more modular now. Uh, people are contributing to the project. Uh, there's a man, uh, Stephen Arkanovich, out in Washington who has already contributed three or four different modules and is just really gung-ho about it. And he ac it actually got him into Ruby, which I was really happy about, uh, to see another Rubyist kind of join the team. It was great. Um, and generally, I'm just much more happy with the way this architecture is laid out. Uh, just anything that contributes more open source, uh, that uh, encourages more open source contributions is, in my mind, uh, something that's great, so. Cool. So uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, well, Bezos laughs on a yacht. Jeff Bezos, that is, <laughs> the head of Amazon. Uh, Alexa Home is actually the first to market with these now native integrations. What I mean by that is that I actually hacked together these integrations, and then about a month later, Amazon came out with the same exact thing in their product. So. I thought that was kind of funny, and you know, uh, whatever, Amazon, that's cool. I'm not going to sue you or anything. I would never do that. Um, that's impossible, apparently. Um, yeah, but we came up with a Hue module, and the Hue module for this project can control not only uh, turning the lights on and off, but also the brightness of the lights, uh, the saturation, uh, also many, many different colors of the lights, which is really nice. Uh, and the module that they have can turn them on and off, which is great, uh, but I want more functionality, so I'm still using my hack. Um, there's also a uh, Google Calendar module, uh, which is contributed by Steve Arkanovich, and uh, they actually just integrated that two or three weeks ago. So leading up to this talk, I was panicking a little bit. I was like, what if they take all the integrations that I've created, and I've literally, you know, presenting the same exact thing that is now inside of this product. But, you know, luckily they only took two of them, so I still have some other things to show you guys, which is nice. Um, there's also an official API now. <laughs> so you don't have to use my hack anymore. Frankly, I think it's a bit easier to use because the way that they're, um, they've kind of like only vaguely released some details of the developer program, but it's not just parsing text. It's a bit more difficult than that. And I think, frankly, that my, uh, my hack is easier to program apps with than their official program. So what I'd love to do one day is create some kind of Ruby DSL for creating applications for the Amazon Echo that makes it as easy to use as, um, and modular as the library that I've built um, versus what's out officially currently. So. Um, so I'm going to give you guys uh, one final demo, and then I'm going to leave some time for questions. Uh, this is a demo with Uber. So we need to bring up that app. Make sure my server's running. Yep. Oh, I need to rate this guy. What should I give him? <laughs> it was pretty good. It was a pretty good ride. Good job. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not pressing any buttons here. Uh, and let's just hope that this works. Alexa, get me a cab to Union Square, New York, New York, stop. So I'm not touching anything. It's no, just my voice. Give it a moment here. See what happens. And my driver is confirmed and en route to my apartment in Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> so you're all wondering, oh, well, why are we in Brooklyn right now? Um, so I did all the testing there, and that's kind of what's hard-coded in right now. Uh, but in the future, I'd hope to be able to parse uh, both you know, beginning and ending locations as well, and you can actually uh, get a cab with your voice, which is pretty cool. Um, 
I have to cancel this ride, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Milan. Uh, if any of you guys know Milan, send him my apologies. Uh, cool. Uh, so that's what I've got for you guys. I have more stuff at alexaho.me. Uh, and I'd love for you guys to contribute to this project as you get your echoes and we can keep kind of hacking on it and I'd love to eventually, like I said, build a DSL that means you can bring all those modules over to the native platform once that's out to the public. Thanks guys.